Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to talk about Rahab. So to start with looking at Rahab, we're going to go to the Old Testament, the book of Joshua, and chapter 2. So uh, we're up after the first five books. You've got uh, Deuteronomy, and then uh, you've got Joshua is the following book. And Joshua chapter 2 is the record concerning Rahab. The situation is that the people of Israel have gone through the wilderness journey. A generation has fallen on sleep. As, uh, they're buried in the wilderness. And now they're about to enter the promised land. Moses has died and Joshua has taken over. And having been given the encouragement in the first chapter, be strong and of good courage, uh, constantly uh, being spoken to him by God and by the people, in chapter 2 he sets about taking Jericho. And verse 1 of the second chapter of Joshua says, And Joshua the son of Nun sent out from Shittim uh, two men to spy secretly. Uh, Shittim was a valley of acacia trees on the eastern side of the river Jordan and he sent two spies. There had been twelve spies spying out the land and there were two came back with a good report and perhaps it was because of that that there were two spies sent to spy out Jericho. So he sent two spies to spy secretly saying go view the land even Jericho and they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. You can understand that that would be the sort of place that men would go and that wouldn't be so unusual uh, that they went to this harlot's house. And then in verse 4, uh, when they, they had heard that these men had come and they came and asked Rahab where they were, well, verse 4 says... The woman took the two men and hid them and said thus, They came men unto me, but I wish not whence they were. So she hid them and said that uh, she didn't know where they'd come from. Well, verse 6 says, But she had brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the stalks of flax uh, which she had laid in order upon the roof. So they were hidden up on the roof and uh, he sent, she sent the people that were searching off to chase them uh, out to try and find them uh, outside the city. And so the men have come to find out what the situation is in Jericho. In verse 9 uh, we read that uh, Rahab tells the men. She said unto the men... I know that the Lord, the word that's used is Yahweh, the God of Israel. Uh, she, they didn't worship Yahweh in, in Jericho, but she, uh, she uses, I know that Yahweh hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. So... Your terror is fallen upon us. They're all frightened of the people of Israel and the inhabitants of the land faint uh, because of you. They're all frightened. Now verse 10 says, For we have heard how that Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. So, she had heard about what happened at the shores of the Red Sea 40 years ago and they were still frightened of this people who had this God with them that had been able to split the Red Sea and allow the people to walk through on dry land. We have heard how Yahweh dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sion, Og, whom ye utterly destroyed, 
and they defeated those uh, kings shortly before. But they, they were worried about what had happened when the, uh, the waters were parted. Let's go back to the record of that incident, shall we? In the book of Exodus and chapter 14. The children of Israel have been let out of Egypt. In fact, they've been asked to go. Uh, by the time the plagues and the last plague had been brought upon the Egyptians. And so uh, then Pharaoh changes his mind and goes, wants to go after them. Well, does go after them. He takes all his chariots, all the best of his army, and chases after the people of Israel, and he's got them trapped by the Red Sea. And then the people of Israel are frightened of the Egyptians now, uh, but Moses is able to calm them and to tell them that God was going to make a way for them, and they went through uh, the sea on dry land. The Egyptians tried to follow them, and as soon as the Israelites were on the other side of the water, then the, uh, the water came back on the Egyptians who tried to follow them. And verse 30 of the, uh, of the 14th chapter says, Thus the Lord, that's Yahweh, uh, saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Clearly, here was a great victory. Indeed, the victory was celebrated by a song of Moses, uh, recorded into the, in the 15th chapter. And as part of that song of praise to God for that victory, verse 10 says, Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them, they sank as lead in the mighty waters. And verse 13, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed, thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation, the people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestina. Then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed and the mighty men of Moab trembling shall take hold on them. All the inhabitants of Canaan shall melt away. And that's exactly what had happened. Carry on, verse 16. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as still as a stone till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. So here was a great victory over the Egyptians which was a far mightier power than the people of Jericho and the people of Jericho were afraid of them and they were just the other side of the River Jordan. Come back to Joshua chapter 2 then. And let's see what Rahab tells these spies. Verse 11 of chapter, Joshua chapter 2. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you, for the Lord, that's Yahweh, your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Here is an inhabitant of Jericho who has trust in the God of Israel. Clearly, she has faith. She believes that the God of Israel will give the Israelites victory. Verse 12, Now therefore I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And so she asked the spies to save herself and her family. And so verse 13 says, And that ye will save alive my father and my mother and my brethren and my sisters and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. 
Clearly she knew that the inhabitants of Jericho were going to die and she wanted her house to be saved in that destruction. And so verse 14 says, The man answered her, Our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be, when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. And those words kindly and truly are part of the character of God that was revealed to Moses in the top of Mount Sinai. And he's asking, she, she's asking the people of Israel to have those characteristics that God had manifested in, toward her and they are promising that they will be kind, deal kindly and truly uh, with her. And so, they've learnt all they need, really. The people are frightened, and so they are to uh, go. So verse 15 says, And she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall, and she dwelt upon the wall. So she was able to get them out with that, going to the gate. She let them down uh, through a window with a cord. That word for cord is used as a boundary of an inheritance, of a region. And so that there's an association with possession there. She let them down by a cord through the window. And then verse 18, it says, They said, Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let uh, which thou didst let us down by uh, and thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home to thee this line of scarlet thread the word line is the word for hope it's the word tikva the, the national uh, anthem of Israel is Hatikva, the hope. Uh, well, this that word line is associated with the hope, uh, and the scarlet thread uh, has associations uh, with earlier in the history of Israel. So this this line of scarlet thread was to be bound in the window from which they had been let down, and then they put conditions on it quite interesting to see how precise are the instructions verse 19 it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of thy house into the street his blood shall be upon his head and we will be guiltless and whosoever shall be with thee in the house his blood shall be on our head if any hand be upon him so they had to be within the house to, uh, to be safe and that's very true there's uh, so, so much in the ark with Noah there was safety uh, in, in the Lord Jesus Christ within the house as it were uh, there is safety uh, from sin well uh, verse 21 says and she said according to your words so be it and she let, sent them away and they departed and she bound the scarlet line in the window and then verse 24 uh, when they got back to Joshua they said truly the Lord hath delivered us into our hands all the land for even all the inhabitants of the country do fight because of us so that was the encouragement that Joshua was given when they got back uh, to the camp of Israel. Chapter 6, the walls of Jericho were to fall with the, and before the children of Israel. And verse 22 says of Joshua chapter 6, when jo jo Joshua had said unto the two men that spied out the country, 
Go into the harlot's house and bring out thence the woman and all that she hath as ye swear unto her. So bring them out. And verse 23. And the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had and they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel the whole of her household Rahab was able to deliver more of her family than, than Lot was when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed it's quite a contrast there uh, Rahab encouraged the rest of the family uh, to obey also so verse 25 says and Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had and she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho because she hid the messengers she believed that the people of Israel would have the victory so she hid the messengers and told them all that they needed to know and so they were able to encourage Joshua and so the victory was won this woman acted on her faith she had faith in the God of Israel and she uh, hid the spies so that uh, they would not be caught so that's the background and that's how Rahab showed her faith. If you go to the first chapter of the New Testament, we have the record of the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. The genealogy is where the, the line of descent. Uh, Matthew chapter 1, and we have all the uh, Jesus' ancestors uh, in Joseph's line uh, and in verse 5 of Matthew chapter 1 we read that Aram begat Aminadab and Aminadab begat Nason or Nashon and Nashon begat Salmon and verse, sorry verse 5 and Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab so Salmon had married Rahab and it was Boaz Boaz of the story of Ruth the record of Ruth in the book of Ruth uh, was born was a son of Rahab so perhaps Solomon was one of those spies that had gone into, the, had gone into Jericho certainly he was the son of the leader of the tribe of Judah so Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab. So uh, Rahab is in the line of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's an interesting fact that just, just picked up. Because she had faith in the God of Israel. Go to Hebrews chapter 11. We have there a record of the people that had faith and in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 29 uh, we've got where we were in uh, Exodus chapter 14 by faith they, that's the Israelites passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned by faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days because they put their faith in God and then by faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace she didn't perish with the rest of the people in Jericho who did not believe in the God of Israel they were frightened of the Israelites they didn't believe in the God of Israel. And so we come to our introductory reading in James chapter 2. James, James follows the letter to the Hebrews 
and in James chapter 2 and verse 24 we read ye see then how by works a man is justified and not by faith only so it's not just faith we have to act on our faith Verse 25, likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? And she told them to go to the, to the hills first for two or three days so that the, uh, those who were chasing them to the river Jordan, they would give up uh, looking for them and then they went back to Joshua. So she was justified by works. She acted on her faith. And so she protected uh, those spies, told them what they needed to, and then uh, let them down so they weren't captured. And so verse 26 says, As the body without spirit or breath is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And so faith has to be an active faith. We have to live according to the faith that we have, the things that we believe in. just want to conclude by uh, quoting something that's probably been you know, quoted several times in, in the last few weeks. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11 uh, and verse 1. What is faith? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, one writer uh, summed it up like this. Faith in God and his word makes the future a reality to the believer. It begets, it gives a conviction of the truth of the matters made known by God. Faith makes a reality of what God has promised. And that's what we need. We need to realise that what God has promised, he will perform. And so, Rahab, as with all the men and women of faith, is included in verse 6 of Hebrews chapter 11. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let us take the example of Rahab and diligently seek him, believing that what he has promised he will perform. Mm -hmm.